Government 2 officially declared Dr. Rodney's death an assassination. Yuri's Ponzi scheme agents charged with money laundering and petty politics kills national development. I am Nori Cobalford, and welcome to tonight's edition of Uncut News. Before we begin, do you have something important you want to leak without revealing your identity? Send us a tip on WhatsApp at 592-659-6151. Close to 41 years after his death, and the government is finally going to put some respect on Dr. Walter Rodney's name. They announced the decision to amend the death certificate to reflect what it actually was, a state-sponsored killing. They've also promised to actually give him some modicum of the recognition the man's legacy deserved by offering to pay for the upkeep of Rodney's grave and putting his books in the education curriculum. With his death anniversary on Sunday, the government is also seeking the approval of the 2014 Commission of Inquiry into his assassination and a resolution that the recommendations contained in the report be approved. While I believe this is a great symbolic move, this is awesome, but you know, if we are serious about justice and fairness, this government should investigate every state-sponsored killing regardless of whose government it took place under. A new session of parliament began yesterday, and as expected, the PPP used their majority to shoot down any motion the opposition brought to the floor of the National Rum Shop, and after seven hours of consideration, they shot down David Patterson's motion to institute a special land policy for shore bases. The motion proposed that a multi-agency task force be formed to examine a land use policy for the oil sector and mandate that all future shore bases be state-owned, but leased to private operators. Pato suggested that additional shore bases be built in Burbeast and Essequibo to decentralize the employment footprint of the oil industry and to reduce the risk of environmental hazards affecting the nation's largest population center pointing out that the current shore base location in Houston is making life hell for commuters and the surrounding community. But the PPP wasn't hearing it. They said that it was just another attempt by the coalition to derail development in a holistic way while deceiving the Guyanese populace that it cares, pointing out that during its time in office, APNU had no interest in having a land policy. They also responded that a special policy cannot be put together for the oil sector alone. Dr. Singh stressed that a land policy must be done in a holistic way. 31 voted in favor and 33 against. Also coming out of yesterday's rum shop session is the admission that the 500 million Guyana dollar diamond to Eccles bypass road was built without a feasibility study done whatsoever. The half a billion dollar project also did not go through the typical procurement and tender method. However, Housing Minister Colin Crow claimed that no procurement method was required since all the designs were done by the CHNPA. Nevertheless, the road, which was expected to be completed in April, is still under construction. Scamming Yuri is going down, and he's taken everyone with him. Yesterday, Soku charged fellow Ponzi schemers Aubrey Norton and Martina Seprasad with money laundering. The pair are accused of scamming victims out of millions of dollars and using the proceeds to purchase properties that were later sold to overseas customers. A classic money laundering case. They were not required to enter a plea and were placed on $500,000 bail each. The matter was adjourned to next week. It should be noted that these are the first ever money laundering charges to be instituted by Soku since its establishment in 2014. Which, given the number of scammers and traffickers out here, I think that's pretty pathetic. Now it's time to tell you about Best Buy's car of the day. Currently on sale, this is Toyota Rush. It comes with mark rims, new tires, DVD stereo, reverse camera, rear spoiler, and much more. Buy cash for $2.8 million. All paid down as low as $560,000 down, with around $63,000 monthly for four years, and it's yours. Call the WhatsApp 662-0844 for more info. Or visit the showrooms at Lot 171 Peter Rose Street, Queenstown, or Lot 2 La Manche Street, and tell them the Rico sent you for this sweet, sweet deal. Last evening, police on the West Coast thwarted a robbery in Tushin. According to police, two patrols were dispatched to the area after Ronks learned of the robbery plans. A red car fitting the description was discovered near the location. A chase ensued, but he managed to elude the police. The car was found abandoned a short distance away. It was impounded by the police. The owner, who operates a car rental service, 
was contacted and was taken into custody. Down in Linden, 24-year-old Hosea Ajadai collapsed and died this morning while in police custody, just days after being arrested for killing his mother, 65-year-old Wanda Wilson. The cops say that he complained this morning about feeling unwell and was taken to the hospital after he collapsed on a table. He was pronounced dead on arrival at the McKenzie Hospital. The mentally unsound Hosea is accused of having beaten his mother to death on Tuesday. She too is said to have suffered from severe mental illness. Police are currently investigating a robbery and assault which occurred last night at St. Ignatius Village in the central Rupununi. Three cutlass wielding bandits kicked in the front door and began beating and chopping the 26 year old male resident of the home with their cutlasses. He immediately fled and his whereabouts are still unknown. His pregnant common law wife saw the trio destroy their property and steal whatever cash, jewelry, and electronics they could have gotten their dirty little fingers on. Police later raided three homes in the area where four males were arrested, including the three suspects. One motorcycle has since been recovered. Introducing Ferry, an app that lets you find someone that's traveling to or from overseas so you could send your packages with them. Genius! Download Ferry from your favorite app store and book a space in someone's luggage, or better yet, if you're traveling, rent a piece of your luggage space and make some money. Ferry puts the X in express shipping. Download today at ferryshareglobal.com. It's now time for today's run report. Today, the nation recorded 108 new cases. There are now 422 persons dead, 21 persons in the ICU, and 1,541 persons in home isolation. The total number of confirmed cases around the nation now stands at 18,196. So, please, people, wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your nose and mouth and mask up before you leave the house. When you do leave home, try to avoid enclosed spaces and large crowds. And remember to give six feet of space between you and others. 45-year-old Kasun Lachman was found dead in his home in Fowles. According to the cops, Lachman was a known alcoholic who lived alone. He was last seen alive Wednesday night lying in a hammock. However, when his friend came to check on him yesterday, Lachman's front door was left open with traces of blood all over the house. His motionless body was discovered in a chair with a head wound. Do you want to grow your money? Sell Digicel Top Up. Become a Top Up vendor through Cellular Plus and make some extra cash to supplement your income at your business or your side hustle. Call 685-3109 for more info. Some stupid kid in Canal Number 1 is in a heap of trouble after he was caught showing off a bullet to his classmates on Thursday. The 16-year-old student of Lovenshire Secondary School was taken into police custody after a female teacher encountered the boy showing off the 32 caliber round to a group of students. The cops haven't said if the boy will be charged or not. And now for our stupid news of the day. One of the dumbest arguments I've ever heard is, quote, if you really care now, why didn't you ever say anything back then? End quote. Unfortunately, this seems to be everyone's favorite way of discussing politics, including the politicians themselves, as evidenced by the government's shooting down of the shore base zoning plan. Yes, it may have not been a perfect plan, but it's better to take an idea and build on it instead of throwing it out because you didn't like who said it. In fact, one of my favorite sayings is, a broken clock is right twice a day, meaning that the truth is the truth no matter who says it. I wish I could say this was a problem that's exclusive to Guyana, but it is not. In the US, we saw eight years of the Republicans rejecting Obama like a red-headed stepchild, while the Democrats hated Trump with the passion of a thousand stars and moons. Only for both parties to turn around and excuse their own party when they do the same, or even worse. Over here, we're seemingly no better. In fact, I'm convinced that if the opposition tabled a motion about the importance of breathing fresh, clean air, half of the country will be dead of suffocation or carbon monoxide poisoning by the next morning. While petty politics is stupid and slows a nation's development, let's be real, America can afford to have a few bad years and still survive. But if petty politics is giving America the flu, then we must be sick with the Rona in Guyana. All of this is to say that if a person is suggesting a sensible idea to bring the country forward, don't shoot it down just because they were quiet during the coalition administration or vice versa. Listen to the idea and think if you would feel the same way if the roles were reversed, because anything else is pretty stupid. 
Hey Guyanese business people, are you looking for a great way to advertise your business? Search no more. Join one of the fastest growing business directories in Guyana. Register your business on snap.gy and get access to more eyeballs. And wait for the best part, it's absolutely free. Get your business listed today on snap.gy. Moving on to our uncut news viewers poll question of the day. Every day we pose a question about current events in the nation, the region, the diaspora, and how you feel it relates to us. So you give your responses in the comments, and we'll read the best ones in the following episode. Yesterday's question was, do you think the incoming Iranian vessels will lead to a conflict, or will they comply in return? Why or why not? Guyana Hassan said, Venezuela should get no weapons until it ends its threat to neighboring nations, particularly us. We already have a crisis with Venezuelan syndicatos getting hold of military weapons for use or resale. Jay Jiram said, Iranian warships are testing Joe Pai. Carl Samoa said, nah, them battleships is just another show of aggression. And finally, Mr. Hall said, America already has things in place to stop the ships. Why? Because they have invested in Guyana's oil, and Venezuela can be a threat to their profits. So let's see what will happen next. Alright, so, good answers, people. So for tonight's question, do you believe that the nation's current land use policy should be updated? Why or why not? Think about that question and tell us in the comments below. If your response is good enough, we just might feature it in our next episode. Anyway, that's all the time we have for tonight. Check us out on Monday for another. Until then, I'm Nerico Bolford saying, have a great weekend. And as always, don't drink and drive, or you'll end up on Monday's episode the hard way. Ha ha! Good night, folks. Hey, Uncut News viewers, thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking on this button over here, or click over there for more news. You can also drop a comment to let me know if you've made it to the end of the video. Goodbye for now!